Hi friends, it's Jess with Our Bipolar. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, a little bit about me. I have bipolar one. I was diagnosed 24 years ago when I was 19 and I was a sophomore in college and I would probably be considered high functioning because you know, I'm married, I have a daughter, I have a career that I'll sort of talk about today, but I do still have symptoms. I think everyone with bipolar does have symptoms. Before we dive right in, if you could please subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you can like the video, if you do like it, and comment. I love all the comments and I try to reply to all of them. Today we're going to talk about my bipolar guide to work trips. So I go on one work trip a year and it's coming up in just a couple days. So I'm just gonna tell you how I'm feeling, getting ready for it, and what I'm doing to try to stay stable with bipolar. Because something like a work trip really could cause symptoms in bipolar. For me, I have to be extremely wary of mania starting or hypomania. So right now, I'm sort of feeling a lot of upheaval, I would call it. I just do not feel comfortable in my skin, feel a lot of anxiety, feeling some kind of shortness of breath and heart palpitations, just getting ready for the trip. You know, I haven't been on a plane since 2019 and I haven't seen my coworkers in at least a couple of years. So it's just, there's excitement, but there's also a lot of anxiety. And for me, that manifests itself as just feeling uncomfortable, but also being very annoyed and just being irritable and irritated by the people I love mostly and just irritated by living life and by, you know, myself. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to not take that out on my family, but it is difficult. And I'm, I'm doing my best, you know, I'm taking my meds and I am getting all the sleep I need. And I'm also doing more yoga. I'm trying to do yoga every day to just bring on some calmness and some quiet in my mind. It is difficult. And I think I will probably up my antipsychotics starting tonight because I am just starting to feel a little too uncomfortable and I want to make sure that stability really happens. I'm flying to Houston, Texas on Thursday alone so I have to get through all of this and once I get there it's going to be like non-stop working for four days and I'll be working through the weekend flying home on Sunday so I, I truly won't have much of a break or much alone time once I'm there. So I'm trying to kind of get ready for that, <laughs> be prepared. I mean, th there's some other things going on that I really don't have a lot of control over, maybe a little bit. My husband is having symptoms for his back, which you may have seen in other videos, um, that he needs to have these back procedures done every five months or so. And so he's coming up on having one of those done. So he's not feeling very well right now. So of course I have some anxiety, like he's gonna be taking care of our daughter alone. He's not feeling very well, but he assured me that he'll be fine. And my parents are also sort of waiting in the wings if he needs their help. But I'm gonna do another check-in once I get to Houston and hopefully do a check-in after I get back. But thanks for being here, I'll see you in Houston. Okay, so it's day three of my work trip. I'm in Houston, Texas, and I'm in my hotel room with this kind of cool mural behind me. It's definitely been a tiring trip. This morning I had to get up at 5.30 a.m. to get ready for a very early meeting. And I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling tired today because of it. 
I have been trying to do yoga every morning, not this morning since I had to get up so early, but I've been, you know, keeping my spirits up. It's definitely easier. I feel like once I get to the work trip, it's a little harder before I leave with all the anticipation and anxiety. I am no longer increasing my Seroquel. It's just been easier to take my normal dose and I was honestly a little afraid that if I up the dose still, that I would have too much trouble getting up so early this morning. The bummer of having bipolar sometimes is that, you know, you have to go to bed early and you don't get to stay up and do fun things sometimes. And I have missed out on some socializing because of bipolar and having to get my sleep. It's good that I'm doing that, but, you know, just hearing about people going out to bars and, you know, hanging out in the hotel bar, it's like, yeah, I'm not doing any of that and I'm not getting to spend time with some coworkers who I really enjoy and haven't seen in years. So that is a bit of a bummer, but I know what I have to do. I know I have to take my meds, get my sleep, those two things above all else, and I have to do my work. And so right now I need to go because I have my last dinner meeting for one of my journals tonight. And I have to meet everybody in the lobby to Uber over to the restaurant. So I'll talk to you again when I'm back in Pittsburgh. Bye guys. Hi everyone, I'm back in Pittsburgh. It's now Wednesday. I arrived home on Sunday, so it's been a few days and I've actually been off up until today. I took a few days off on purpose after my trip to make sure I had time to just rest and relax. And actually Monday was Juneteenth, so I already had that day off. So I just took Tuesday and Wednesday. I just took these couple extra days attached to the holiday to make sure I could rest and recoup since, especially since I had to work through the weekend. So I'm gonna give you a little recap of the trip, but first I want to tell you, first and foremost, that I did not have any bipolar symptoms. I have not up to this point. So what I was fearing most was hypomania or mania and I have avoided all of that. And at this point, I'm pretty certain that mania and hypomania are not coming my way. I think I've done enough to ward those off. So just a little recap. Like I said, I was really sure to, of course, take my meds, get enough sleep. I was doing yoga almost every day and I think you know, those were the key things that I needed to do to stay well. I did, like I said, I did miss out on some social events because I had to go to sleep early. What happened was uh, we had dinner meetings most nights and then those meetings would go until like 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. And then some people would go out after the dinner meetings. And I just could not do that, not with having bipolar. So I didn't, so I missed out on some of the things were going to a brewery, going and doing karaoke, hanging out in the hotel bar. The events didn't really matter, but I did miss out on hanging out with people who I really like and haven't seen for a long time. So that was a bummer, but I did get to go to an Astros game, although I had to leave a little early so that I could go to sleep. But I did have fun with people, you know, while I was there. One thing that did happen, so I should say, when I go on trips like this, whether it's a work trip or not, I try to kind of expect the unexpected, like just know that not everything is going to go right. Like for instance, my flight on the way home was canceled. So I was sort of frantically searching for another flight for a while. And then suddenly that flight was uncanceled, 
but it moved to a different gate, which was in a different terminal of the airport. So I had to like rush over to this other terminal and then it turned out the flight was delayed. So I really didn't need to rush, but I try to take those kinds of things in stride because I know, you know, these things are going to happen. One thing that I wasn't expecting and took me a bit by surprise was seeing another coworker who I had a little bit of an incident with a couple years ago. It's sort of a complicated story, but my department had gone through a restructuring and in that restructuring, people in my role, in my position, sort of got the short end of the stick. And it was pretty obvious, especially to the people in my role who we were all pretty upset by this. So I decided to speak out at a meeting about this and just ask some questions because it was the first time I'd ever felt wronged in any way by my company. And I think, you know, a lot of other people felt the same way, but indirectly, I was possibly going to upset a couple people and I knew that this could happen. So what I did was I emailed them directly after this meeting. And I said, you know, I'm sorry if this upset you, but this was definitely not aimed at you. It was aimed at, you know, decisions made by the department. And the one person took it very well and said she was not upset at all. She understood, you know, where I was coming from. And the other person never wrote me back. And this was a person who I had been pretty close with. She was someone that I considered a friend. We worked on the same journal and I actually was pretty close with her and she was going through a really rough time in her life. And also at this work event in past years, I had let her stay in my hotel room because she wanted to come to the event, but our company didn't want to send her. So I said, stay in my room. And this happened, you know, for a couple different years. So we were fairly close. And I also knew she was the type of person who got upset fairly easily, took things very personally. And I did try to head that off with this email, but you know, apparently uh, the damage was done and it had been a couple years and I hadn't seen her. I had seen her in meetings, but you know, I didn't really have a good gauge of how upset she was, if she was upset at all. But when I saw her in person at the meeting, it was very obvious that she was upset. She did not greet me warmly. She just said a quick, hey. She didn't ask about my family. I didn't get a chance to ask about hers. I mean, I knew her pretty well. So um, it was pretty obvious and it did upset me mostly because I realized how upset she was by this and I didn't intend for that to happen. And so that's still, that's the one thing that is sticking with me and I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do moving forward, if I should reach out to her again. Luckily, you know, she has moved on and she's doing very well at our company and she received a prom promotion. So I really hope she's doing well. This isn't something that truly upset her. Uh, the other thing is she does know that I bipolar, we were close enough that I shared that with her. But, you know, you can't control everything and this is something I definitely can't control. And I thought I was doing the right thing by speaking up a couple years ago for the people in my position, but I did upset her and that's obvious. The good news is that I am doing well. I go back to work tomorrow and I don't have to do this again for another year. All right, well, thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.